Indian country heard in my favorite. <coughs> Welcome back to my garage. Sorry for the inconsistency in uh, video output lately. I promise it'll change now. Back to the regular at least once a week schedule. As mentioned in the previous video, last week I went to Scotland and attended a theoretical physics conference. New directions in theoretical physics. That was really interesting. And Scotland was really interesting. And Scottish food is really interesting. It's uh, basically Norwegian Christmas food all the time. <laughs> That's interesting. And a whiskey. And the beers. Wrecked havoc on my internals though. I had to pay for that pretty much the whole weekend and yesterday. Edinburgh is a really beautiful city and I want to thank Roland Skinner for the guided tour on Monday. Showing me some bars. I actually found some nice bars myself also. They were inclined to go to bed under blankets a My social awkwardness was a slight problem this trip. I had uh, troubles with uh, connecting with people, especially at that physics conference. Might because I went there with the intent of being the idiot in the room and then saturate my brain with uh, difficult problems, complex problems for my brain to work, churn on while I can do simple stuff here. Because that's what we're doing now. Trying to do simple stuff first and uh, confirm the design before we do complicated unknown stuff. I think that idiot in the room thing backfired and I was feeling too much of an idiot and I couldn't build up the courage to start conversations because I was feeling like I would uh, interfere with uh, more important conversations with uh, other not so idiot people. <laughs> Anyways, we're back now and I've had some time to think. Yesterday I pretty much decided I was going to use the, this case, the normal PIP case with the large crankcase volume and mount a rotary valve. That would be the least unknown for me because I'm so used to running rotary valves, intake valves. More complexity. I started designing and was on the verge of building new cases with smaller crankcase volume for the engine. That was, I had decided on that pre yesterday. Today I decided I will machine the existing cases to accept this reed valve and if that works then we know it works. I'm really set on running forced induction and that would still work with the reed valve and we wouldn't have to run the sliding reed valve anymore even though this causes more of a obstruction than this. Maybe not such a huge issue after all. As luck would have it the existing bolt pattern almost matches up with uh, the reed valve. Not in the up and down direction but we can modify the reed valve to to suit. Let's remove this from the dyno frame, take it apart and then draw up the, the changes in CAD and uh, machine the cases for this reed valve to fit. Lots of smashed reed valve evidence in here. <laughs> Lots of smashed reed valve. There's not much of a modification needed here. Pretty much just squaring up this hole. Making it a square hole versus round. I'm a little bit concerned about the shape. There's no support for the reed valves in a reforce reed block. It might be better with something with the reed stops built in. I'll see what I can find for a CR80. That's the same size as this pretty much.
I've transferred the CAD files to my CNC machine. This has been sitting for a long while now in a cold garage. And it probably will uh, lose steps if I start using it right away. What I'm going to do is perform a dry run. Run the whole program maybe twice, three times to warm up the machine. Make everything less sticky. The ways with the cold oil and uh, everything. Just warm everything up. Reduce the chance of losing steps and minimize the effect of the machine growing while it's warming up. Making things uh, not accurate. I want to thank Arthur Alexio and his company Live Tools for sending me this uh, bucket of uh, flood coolant. Perfect timing because I just ran out. So we'll have to refill the flood coolant system too before we start actually machining something. I'm upgrading my flood coolant container. I'll need to find a new box for my uh, brute force parts. It's quite a bit larger. I had problems with this draining completely when uh, there was lots of chips around the machine and the uh, coolant was uh, taking a long time getting back to the tank. This should solve the problem. You can see the cavity is far too large for this reed block. That's because I've uh, made this to suit a CR85 reed block. Which should be here tomorrow, hopefully. With the reed block in there. This should give me a little less case volume than before and a much better intake passage versus using that adapter block at an angle on the outside and all that stuff. Much shorter intake, no steps and stuff like that, which is always a good thing. Let's hope this works. If it doesn't, if the volume is too much for the reeds, we'll have to make up some stuffers. I can't use the ones I 3D printed a long time ago because uh, they were meant to go into this intake because I was only using this intake. And now I'm not using this intake and thereby I can't use stuffers mounted in this intake. You see what I mean? So I'll have to make something that can be attached to the transfers here. Make, make the transfers more shallow. We'll see. Let's hope this works. And let's hope that reed valve arrives tomorrow. The CR85 V-Force 3 reed valve has arrived. You can see there's uh, quite a bit of difference here. This is the Derby reed valve. And here's that CR85 reed valve. This is a common trick for derby people because the whole patterns match up pretty good. Seems to be no interference issues with the crank. The existing hole pattern for this intake does not match though. I'm going to elongate the holes in the actual reed block and then machine a new intake that fits this hole pattern but uh, covers the reed and also accommodates holes for this thing. So that's the plan now.
done. We'll need some gaskets, but that's easy enough. Unfortunately, that's all I have time for this week. Not only because I'm running out of time, but because I managed to lose my axial shims for the crankshaft. Cannot find them anywhere. I suspect I lost them last time we had this apart and then maybe I've vacuumed them up or something. I spent all of yesterday driving around my hometown and the town next to it trying to find a place with shim washers to no luck. And I had a bag of uh, 20 millimeter ID shim washers and I lost that one too. <laughs> so I uh, had to order. Hopefully they'll be here Monday or Tuesday and we can assemble and test this normal, normal two stroke engine. See you next time. At night and cheer me through the day. The broom, the broom, the bonny, bonny broom.